right over there is the man of the hour, the original Joe Rogan. Joe, how you doing today? I'm here and I waited a long time for this. I've never heard of you until a couple months ago. Nobody I, I never heard of you until a couple months ago. And can you tell us why after almost 50 years, now you decided to come forward and tell people about your side of what happened with when Joe Rogan got basically kidnapped from you. It's my daughter sitting right here. Her son that, if you see him leave before the talk, 16 years old. He went to his mother one day and said, Mom, Daddy, re Papa really beat his ex-wife up? So, so her, he your grandkid, school. your yeah. grandkid yeah. heard, I'm assuming at school, school. from the internet yes. that said that you beat your ex-wife. Yeah, and you know what I said? No like us. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you I'm a roller, a holy roller. We're, like we're not that. saints, we're not, not saints. saints. No, but let me explain something to you. Oh, you got Pittsburgh gear on that. I looked <laughs> up in the air and I said, my man, I gotta get him this time. I let it go. I let him go because he was my blood. I let him go because I Cleveland Avenue where you came from. You don't pull that kind of shit. Family is family. Let's talk about now um, the day Joe was taken from you. But when I went over there, I called up first and nobody answered the phone. I went over there that Saturday morning and the gentleman that was taking care of the janitor of the building they lived in said, hey, how you doing, Pop? I said, oh, how you doing? How's everything? You see my son? He said, they're gone. I said, they're gone. Where they moved? Yeah, man, California. So she took a, took your son away without any knowledge. She she didn't say anything. She just took him and left. Her and her boyfriend. Her and her boyfriend. About a week and a half after he was gone, I get a letter from the uh, San Francisco uh, welfare that I had to pay hundred thirty five dollars a week. Wow, that's how he find out, huh? So I said, wait a minute. I called. My friend again, the lawyer. So when he came over to my house, he said to me, he said, Joe, he said, she can't do this. She had to get a lawyer, I mean, a judge, to sign off on your son to make sure that she can leave properly. What she did was illegal. Illegal. So my lawyer said to me, he said, well, let's file charges. I said, whoa, whoa, right there. That's what happens to him and his sister. He says, what do you mean? I said, it's California. I don't know how screwed up they are out there. You've been in 74, right? Yeah. I said, what would happen if he, if he went to family services and got put into a, a home until this is straightened out? This kid is too soft. I said, he, he, he would fold up. I was thinking, I said, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. It, it brings her back. And, and put the kids right and his, his future in, in jail. Let, let me rewind for a second. So after your ex-wife steals your son from you and goes to California, your lawyer comes to you and says, whoa, this ain't legal. And the only reason you don't go after her is because you're worried that if they take the kids away from the mother, right. they're gonna be in some kind of foster care. No doubt about it. I, I want you guys to think for a second about the, the compassionate nature of a man who just lost his son to his ex-wife and he decides not to go after her legally because he's still worried about the kids. I commend you, sir. You let your son go, who was stolen from you, and you get this message that your grandson now is questioning whether you beat someone. Tell us what you're going through in that moment. What, what, what I went through in that moment was, I said to myself, well, it's an expression I had from back then. I don't want to say it on, on this podcast because it's a little. That's okay. All right. Well, be I, yourself, brother. I looked, I, I said to myself, I said, Lord, I waited. 48 years, but here I am, I'm back in the hood, and mother made it, motherfucker, I'm getting, I'm going after this lying son of a bitch, and I'm gonna bury him. 
There's no holding me back. He lied. He lied. He he made on his first trip to the Howard Stern show. Oh yes, my father. He beat my mother up. Oh yes. Then when it got popular, and he said he was from Newark, and I was, I was raised up in a bad neighborhood. He wasn't from Newark. He spent only eight nine months. Where was he from? Harrison. Harrison? He was born in Slapped on the Is that the hood? No, it ain't the middle, middle, hood. The middle class neighborhood? Yeah, that's so, right. So, so, so Joe's from the suburbs. Absolutely. Yeah. So he's no he's no badass from yeah. the hood. Joe ain't Joe. No. Look, <laughs> Joe knows he's sweet and he's got sugar in his tank. And he knows that he can't be a tough guy. He can take up all the karate in the world. Go to all the dojos you want, lift all the weights you want. But when you're born, if you don't have this, you better stay the hell home. If you ain't got heart, you ain't gonna do shit out there. Oh, Joe's oh. a phony. Joe has sugar in his tank? I, I bet I bet on that. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I act like I'm the father. Did you see signs of that when he was young? Long time ago. <laughs> but he, then he, all of a sudden, I see, I, you know, you go by channel, change mm -hmm. the channel. He's there, and he says, oh, yeah, my son, he beat the uh, 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 did, he ever, did he ever say that he saw you do that? No. So so it's all allegations. He never said he saw it with his own eyes. Never. Okay, so he's getting this all this information from basically your ex-wife. <laughs> Later on, he made it up. I, I, think, I think a good <laughs> uh, point that we need to add here is that Joe has a, a biological sister, a full biological sister from mm. my father. Okay. Um, and she is a year younger, approximately a year what younger. What is her name? Laura. Laura. Rogan. Okay. And um, <laughs> Laura was in the picture as well. So if Joe was seven, Laura was six. <coughs> and why isn't she ever brought up? Why doesn't anybody know better? Where where's her memory of all of these? Was she taken to? Absolutely. Yeah. It was So it wasn't just Joe, it was yeah. also the sister that was yes. taken. When it comes down to Joe, let me ask you a few things. What would you like for him to do? You really aren't on my good side right now. Because you lied. But to put your father into the point that I was such a bad guy. I was a psychotic guy. If I was psychotic, Joe, I would have never made 30 years in the police department. I would have been gone. You were putting away psychopaths. Yeah. Right. And here's the thing, Joe. What I would love for you to do is get them 15 million, 20 million people you got followed and tell them one day, I got the wrong information. My father was a good guy. That's it. So. This is all about, this is all gonna stop. All these videos, everything stops when Joe says, Dad, I'm sorry, I had the wrong information. You gotta go to my, my way, my yard, my backyard, to me and my family, and apologize. But you don't have the balls, Joe. I told you that on the, on the tip -tip. If I'm a man, I'm gonna at some point reach out to my father, 100%. reach out to my father to hear his side of the story. How many times have I listened to your podcast, Joe, and you said there's two sides to every story? How come you never listen to this man's side of the story? I'm sitting across with this man right now. This ain't about money for him. You can look in that man's eyes. This is not about money for this man. My father had made numerous attempts to reach out to him, okay, when his grandfather died, right? His yeah. grandfather died. No response. Uh, no response. When we were 19 years old, we reached out to him. He responds that my father's a sperm donor. He was in his beginning Ouch. of his 30s. Ouch. It's amazing he called me a sperm donor. But he must have forgot the time when he was with Howard Stern and then, and he got two, not one, two, Strippers pregnant. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa. Wait, wait. What? You know, you know, you know what, my friend? We're gonna end on that little note right there. Original Joe, do you have any last words? Yeah. I, I'm original, I stay original, 
And I mean what I say, y'all, I'm a serious man. Your mother, your two uncles, they don't know me. They talk shit about me, but you don't know me. Read that letter that my lawyer sent me. Read it good, word for word. That's who I am, Jeff. I want to end this podcast by saying this. Joe was not here to defend himself, but everything we put out here is factual. And that's what people out here who are listening, go back and review it and fact check this man. Oh, okay. if, he, if he was after money, he would have done this 20, 30 years ago. Absolutely. He did this because Joe embarrassed him. And let me tell you something. When you don't show people respect, this is the end result. And, and Joe, my last word. I'm straight. I'm talking straight. I didn't need no doobie or bong to talk this shit tonight. Like you do. You need it because you squat when you got a piss.